Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I greet you with Jesus. Joy, hello, podcast family. It's a delight to share God's word with you. I pray that you and your family are doing amazing. May the hand of the Lord continue to point in your direction and bring you favor. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful. We are so grateful. We thank you that in you we live and move and have our, have our very being. We thank you that you are the essence of our lives. We find joy in you we find completeness in you you are the reason for our very lives and at this moment i pray for those who are going through one or two challenges that makes it difficult for them to smile i am praying that god you will provide you will provide i speak provision into your direction right now i speak help into your direction right now i speak favor i speak advantage and opportunities into your life right now in the name of jesus i take charge and i speak in agreement with you that whatever you are believing god for for the month that we are in may god supply your needs according to his riches in glory through christ jesus i declare open doors i declare favor i declare help healing deliverance and all kinds of things that only heaven can give may god supply your needs right now in the supernatural name of jesus i pray amen and amen god bless you you know something um I want to thank God for your life and some of you are not aware but those who are part of Give a Podcast they know that it's an audio podcast but we just move into video so I'm excited about it and uh, I think it's also increasing even the video um, streaming number all right so quick uh, housekeeping stuff so the goal of the podcast is to definitely only share the podcast here right and i have a ultimate goal that when we hit about 200 listeners this will be a listening platform only so the amens you have to say it by faith right i will just shut it down so that it can i will be the only person that can post here all right but for the podcast that goes on on podcast globally all platforms then is the audio that people can listen everywhere the podcast is if you search on the pastor Kwame, you find my podcast all over the world on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on every podcast platform out there. Right. So that is what is exciting. And so for here, you get to watch the videos or the recording of the podcast itself. Now, what I want to share quickly is the fact that um, strictly this is only for the podcast. It's not for personal posting. Right. And also, we, I want to <laughs> limit the amens to 10 amens a day. Okay. Because the whole idea is that the more you have a lot of people, you don't want a lot of notification on everybody's uh, phone, right? So uh, 10 amens a day. If you are number 11, you have broken the rule. All right. Less than 10 is good, right? So we don't want a lot of um, notifications and stuff like that. This is a listening platform primarily. All right. I hope that's cool. Praise God. Okay. Let's get to the word. I uh, have something to share with you all today. I'm excited about it. Um, so it, I posted a wrong verse for some funny reason when i was designing the flyer so in second corinthians 3 or 5 paul says not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything or for ourselves right but our confidence comes from god let me take it again i like the verse so much not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves but our competence not confidence competence comes from god amen amen that's a powerful word now i'm going to share with you overcoming the fear of failure overcoming the fear of failure right that's what we're going to talk about but let's always do the right thing one of the things that we do on the podcast is to show you how to approach a bible verse so that you can be able to learn properly all right so you have to take it in context so here paul notice that paul is is a it's an apostle that has a lot of work to do because he was called for a unique covenant and at that time his covenant what he was teaching was not popular so he faced a lot of uh back slash and people were against him every corner and even churches that he pioneered by the time he comes back this issue so in the church of corinth paul is coming back and the issue at hand is that people don't really believe his apostleship so he, he has to defend himself and tell them what he has done and everything and you notice that paul when he came through the door he checked all his credentials and all his human accomplishment away he said i count all of this trash that i may know him so at this point paul is talking about his ability as an apostle and he's saying that all the things that he has done it is purely god because his natural ability was 
didn't count when he saw the glorious light so he was always bringing himself to a place where the church in corinth will understand that his work as an apostle speak for itself but it is purely by the grace of god so it's very very important that you understand that now and so he comes up with this powerful statement that um our competence the things that we are able to do is not in ourselves but it is coming from god so three things we're going to talk about today as it relates to overcoming the fear of failure now all of you listening to me have a level of confidence that you have depending on where you are playing some of you as i'm speaking to you you can do a lot of things with a comfortable audience right but there is this silent fear should you be taken to the next level on a bigger platform some people don't want to go to the next level but secretly you wouldn't know that because there is this fear what if i get there and i don't deliver what if i get there and it doesn't happen for me and i want you to know that it doesn't matter how famous how talented how gifted you are there's always a few seconds where every person before they get on stage is nervous from superstars to whatever because we are human there's that fear and i'm speaking to you today concerning the things that are, god is about to give you the things that is about to happen and there is a tendency for you to be afraid and one of the things that fear does is that fear only works when you allow it amen that's why we have placebo effect that's why we have all of those psychological effect as soon as you let fear in fear will do what you are afraid it will do you understand that and so it's important that you don't entertain fear so anything to let you not entertain fear is how you win so that if a great door is about to open to you and as soon as the great door is opening fear grips you even though you can do what is required at that level because fear has come in it will cripple your ability fear will take some part it's like it's like applying taxes to uh, uh, i mean there's an income call before taxes and after taxes, right? You get $5,000 and they take taxes and then you take home your net. It's about 4,005 or whatever, right? So as soon as fear comes in, it takes your strength down. If you have 5,000 strength to the table and you entertain fear, it drops to about 4,000. You understand that fear takes them out for no reason. So it's critical that I don't know who this is for, but before we lay the three points down, I want you to understand that as soon as you entertain fear, fear will drop your mojo. Fear will drop your skill level. Fear will drop your anointing level. Fear will drop your level. And then you will perform poorly and you will think that I knew it. I couldn't play at that level. That's not true. That is because you opened the door and fear came in and fear took a spot. And that's why you couldn't get a hundred percent in. So I want to talk about how to overcome the fear of failure the fear factor that will stand in front of you and your next level do you understand as a preacher as a as whatever you are there's a fear factor when you are jumping into something new and i want to talk to you about how to overcome that through the verse right okay let's talk about it the first thing i want you to understand when it comes to overcoming fear is the fact that you should take all your abilities all your gifts all your talent and plug them into god first before you plug yourself into the giftings let me explain that all of us are given gifts abilities strength talents and things that we are able to do and those are the things that open doors to the next level and you are called to do it on a bigger platform you are called to do it big to bring god's glory right the thing about our gift if you want to compare it to something you can understand we are like the cell phone and the gifts are like the apps on our lives you understand that and so when we operate with these gifts the truth is that the reason why samson didn't know he has lost his app of strength was because when we are operating we don't really control how the gift works it's a gift to us but it's not us there is the gift and there's us and so when we tap into the gift then we begin to flow Nobody who knows how to sing doesn't know why they know how to sing. They just know they don't know how to sing. You understand that? So it's a gift that they have. And when they operate, they operate it. So sometimes the, 
you can't guarantee whether the gift will function all the time for you. And that reality can bring a little bit of nervousness. You understand that? And that is where the devil will whisper to you. What if you stand there and you make a mess? What if you don't preach your best? What if you go there? You understand that? So because you understand that the gift is not me, I have to activate the gift. And sometimes it doesn't show up the way I want it. You understand that? All right. With that said, I want you to understand that the first step in overcoming the fear of failure is to take every talent, every gift, every ability you have and don't ever relate to the gift directly. What I'm trying to teach is that take the gift, put it on the cloud before you use it. You understand? Meaning that between you and the gift, there should be God in between. You understand? So don't ever put your confidence in your gift. Put your confidence in the God of the gift. Every ability, if you are beautiful, if you can play, if you can sing, whatever you can do, don't relate to that thing directly. Let God come in between you and that thing. So that you understand that my hands is in the hands of God singing. My hands is in the hands of God being married. My ha- you understand that? So the gloves you put on before you touch the gift is God. So when God is in between your gift and yourself, then there is a guarantee that the gift will work all the time. It won't fail you. Because if you put your confidence in your gift, it will fail you one day. So put your confidence in the God of the gift and you will be able to stand and not be ashamed and afraid of failure because you cannot work with God and fail. You understand that it's very important, but it's very tempting because sometimes you can be so sure that I got this. You understand if I listen to a lot of these amazing footballers who don't know God, they brag a lot about their gifts because it does work. Do you understand that? But the reason is it is dangerous to put your trust in your gift is because you can lose the gift without knowing it. The Bible says something got up and didn't know he has lost the gift of strength. Because the gift giver can take it from you. But if you always use the gift giver before the gift, then you know that if the gift giver is with me, the gift is with me. So practically what I'm saying is that Take all your apps and put it on the cloud. You understand that? Those of you who understand network, basically cloud means that if you have something on the cloud, wherever you go, you can access it. But if it's on a physical computer, then you can only get it on the computer. So first thing, I hope you're you're getting the picture. Never put your confidence in your beauty. Never put your confidence in your ability. Never put your confidence in your skill. Never put your confidence in your talent. Put your confidence in the God of those talents. And so when you stand, you say that I can do it. All right, let's keep going. Point number two, the devil will come to you. If you rely on God to do what you do, the devil will come to you and say that because you did this and this against God, God will let you fail before people. You understand that? Because point one is to trust in the God who gave you the gift, not the gift itself, and you will never be afraid. Number two is to understand that there will be a voice that the enemy will bring and say to you that you just snub your husband and you are going to lead worship. God will not be with you. You just did this and you are going to do this. God will not be with you. That will be the voice of the enemy to condemn you. Do you follow? Right. The reason you should not allow that voice to condemn you is because the day you didn't snub your husband the day you didn't do something bad before you operate in your gift your gift worked not because you didn't do something bad your gift worked because of grace amen it is grace that makes you do what you do it's not because you live right amen so when the devil comes and say you did wrong so your gift will not work tell the devil that my gift works because of grace not because of my own filthy righteousness amen so that you silence the enemy and understand that god is whom i depend on for this gift to work not my righteousness not my own righteousness but it is god that gives me the grace to do what i do do you understand that so once you understand that i'm standing here it doesn't matter if i'm speaking to 10 million people or 10 people i cannot fail because it is god and then my gift i use god or god uses me to do his work 
I don't separate my ability from who God is. And secondly, when the enemy comes to bring condemnation that you don't live right and you are coming to worship, you don't do this right and you're coming to do this, tell the devil, I do all of this by grace. It's not because I am better than somebody. It's not because I am more something. It is by grace that I operate. And the last before we pray is this. You have to be very, very fearful in a reverential way of grace. Never take grace for granted. Do you understand? You have to have a reverential fear for grace. Grace is a very dangerous thing at the same time, powerful. Grace is the only thing that can use you and throw you away at the same time. In other words, the gift will work and God will still not want you. Do you understand that? So I want to balance this by letting you understand that don't live anyhow just because it is grace that makes you operate don't live anyhow just because it is grace that make you prophesy don't live anyhow just that it's grace that gives you all the gifts you have it is grace but grace has a way if it's abused it will use you and throw you away paul said i discipline myself so that after grace has used me grace will not dump me you follow so let's recap one don't connect yourself to your gift Connect yourself to God and from God to your gift and you will never fail. And number two, when the enemy comes and tells you, you have disobeyed God, so God will fail you. Tell the devil, it is not my strength that God uses to operate in the gift. It is by grace that I operate. And lastly, once the devil leaves you, then you understand that you tell yourself, self, be careful because grace can use you and so dump you. Are you following? Father, we pray that you will cause us to be strong. If there's anybody who has put their confidence in their gifts and they are shaky, I ask that you begin to cause them to experience you in a way that they will put their full confidence in you, knowing that you who has begun a good work, you will perfect it. And then we will always not be afraid of failure. We will try new things. We will step into new dimensions and we will grow from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.